Hey, welcome again to this tutorial on Shadows Study for your Architectural Site Analysis. In this video, we will finalize our shadow study by creating and exporting a 3D view of our site, as well as creating a layout presentation inside AutoCAD. Are you ready? So let's click here on the 3D side view that we created in part 2 and what we're going to do here is find the most interesting as well as useful shadow representation on the site and since we already did this in the part 2 we know it is on the winter solstice on December at 9 a.m. So once we have this site 3D view, what we're gonna do is go to File and Export and finally to the graphic. Okay, we are ready. We have all of our shadow studies at different times. So we are gonna go to AutoCAD and use all of these images. So let's open AutoCAD. So this is the model that we created in part one, not from scratch, but with the help of a free website. So check it out after the end of this video. So once we are here, what we're gonna do is go to custom and top view. Finally, we're gonna go to hidden and click to the wireframe. So this is a 2D view now. And what we're gonna do is go to paper space by clicking layout and before we do anything here in paper space we need to think about the size of our final sheet so in my case I want this layout presentation to be on a sheet of 11 by 17 inches so once you have that Let's go back to AutoCAD and we're going to draw a rectangle using the rectangle command and I'll say the origin point from 0, 0, 0, as you can see your rectangle is showing like so and we're going to use D to specify a dimension for our rectangle in this case it's going to be 17 and then 11 so once we do that we can click like so to finalize our rectangle of 11 by 17 inches next what we're gonna do is right click and pick page setup here let's click modify and this is basically all of the plot settings for your final sheet let's pick here dwg to pdf because that's what we want to create in the end the paper size we said is going to be 11 by 17 inches so I'll pick that one here on the plot area we're going to click extends and center the plot the scale will be 1 to 1 always and scale line weights let's check that and let's click OK now we can close this and as you can see the viewport that AutoCAD created automatically for us is huge so we know that the rectangle that we created is the correct size so let's use that one to kind of resize our viewport so I'm gonna remove this viewport because this is not a correct viewport so by using the delete shortcut on your keyboard and here basically what we have is our rectangle that we created which has the correct dimensions 11 by 17 and we also see this uh, white rectangle that represents the sheet in AutoCAD that also has the correct dimension because we just set it up in the page manager to be 11 by 17 so here what we're gonna do is move that white space that AutoCAD created for us in the page setup manager to our original rectangle that we draw so to do this let's go again to page setup manager and let's click modify and all we need to do is click ok because it's already centered and as you can see the white rectangle 
that AutoCAD created for us is now aligned with our rectangle. And this is the correct way because we don't want to move our sheet from the 0.0.0, .0 origin point. This is very important to avoid future problems in AutoCAD. So once we have everything nice and aligned, let's use the offset command by using the O shortcut and pressing enter. And we are gonna offset half of an inch of this rectangle. What we're gonna do next is create our viewport by using the shortcut MV and pressing enter. I'll click here and over here. So you can see this is showing our 3D model. However, we don't want that. So let's double click inside the viewport and let's pan by holding your middle mouse wheel and move it like so. Let's now go to model space by clicking on this layout tab. And as you can see here, we don't know where exactly is our sheet located. So in order to have a rectangular guideline in model space, we're gonna select this viewport and rectangle by using the crossing window and deselect the viewport by holding shift on your keyboard and selecting the viewport. So once we have the polyline selected only, we can use the following command, ch space, to send this polyline rectangle all the way to model space. Once we do that, let's press enter and double click outside this viewport. Now, if we go to model space, you can see that we have a nice guideline that represents the exact size of our paper sheet in AutoCAD. So once we have the exact paper size 11 by 17 in paper space as well as model space, it's time for us to insert or bring our shadow study that we created. So let's do it. I'm gonna click and drag it over here and I'll click here once, press enter and enter to accept all of the settings. If we zoom in, we can see that this is one of our shadow studies and don't worry about the size right now, we're gonna resize them all at once. So let's keep inserting our shadow studies images. Now let's try to insert more than one image at the same time by holding shift and selecting these three images. Let's see what happened. Oops, as you can see, AutoCAD doesn't let me to do that, however, since you are in the laser architecture, I'll create a command to insert multiple images at once in the future. So make sure you have your notification bell on if you don't want to miss it. For now, let's keep inserting our shadow study images one by one. Okay, so once we have all of our shadow study images inside AutoCAD, it's time to resize them all at once. So I'm gonna move them from this point using the move command all the way over here. Next, I'm gonna use the explode command to explode this polyline and make it a line so I can divide it into three equal spaces. To divide it, I'm gonna use the divide command by using this shortcut and pressing enter. I'll then select this line and choose three. As you can see, it looks like nothing really happens. However, if we use the DDP type command and pick a different point style, you can see that now you can see your points. All right, so let's scale all of our images at once by selecting them and use the SC shortcut for scale. And let's click over here once and type R for reference. I'll click here once, two eyes. And then as you can see, your shadow study images are scaling. So I'll finally click over here like so. So we don't need these points anymore. We can remove them by using the delete shortcut on your keyboard. And now we can arrange our images one next to each other like so. Okay, so once we have them ready, let's move it down a little bit around 20 feet to separate them because remember, they are shadow studies from summer, winter, and spring. Let me move and scale this 3D image by using the same procedure that we used on the previous images. Scale with reference. And 
I'll click like so. Okay, it's looking pretty good so far. It's time for us to add some text. We're gonna use for this the mtext command. I'll click here once and over here. So I'll start by typing the summer solstice. As you can see, the text is very tiny. So I'll select it and open the property palette by typing PR and pressing enter. And here, if we go all the way down, we can see the text height that it is really tiny. So let's change it to about 20 feet looking much better all right once we have that let's copy this text using the copy command so let's type co and press enter copy down like so and we can change this text to june 21st because this is the summer solstice i'll copy it one more time to the right to indicate the time in this case 9 a.m i'll make this text bold and this is basically ready so once i have my first text rotated and place it into one of my shadow studies I'm gonna simply copy the time text like so and then double click on the text to change to the different times 12 p.m. as well as 4 p.m. All right, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna now copy all of this text using the CO shortcut and pressing enter. I'll copy it from this point, click to this and to this other point awesome i'll just change it accordingly this is gonna be the spring equinox and this happens around march 21st the next one is gonna be the winter solstice around december 21st and finally i'm gonna add the according text for our 3d view finally i'm gonna copy and add our title for our shadow study presentation like so and in the end you can put your name as you wish all right everything is looking pretty good okay we're almost done but now we need to create our site boundary or property line and let me show you how to quickly do it so let's zoom in over here and let's create a new layer by using the la shortcut and i'll click make and the name i'll specify site and press enter as you can see site layer was created i'll click over here to change the layer so i'll pick red true color and then click ok all right we are ready let's draw a polyline using the pl shortcut and i'm gonna start drawing my site boundary starting from here like so and all the way around okay once we have it, let's select our property boundary and here on the property palette, let's change the line type to dashed. Oops, it looks like the dashed are not showing. So what we need to do is use the LT scale variable. So let's set it to 96 and you can see that our dash is now showing. If you want, you can change the LT scale even farther. Now let's go to the property palette to change the global width to around 12 inches. Or even better, to fit. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Let's go to paper space now to see how things are looking. Oops, and we can see that our property boundary is not showing in dashed. So we're going to use a different system variable here and it is the PSLT scale. Let's set it to zero and press enter. As you can see, it looks like nothing happens. However, let's use the regenerate all command and press enter. As you can see, our dash are now showing up. Great. Let's do a pre by using the PRE shortcut and just to see how things are looking okay let's go back to model space and let's make this a block by using the block command I'm gonna name this site block and click OK. I'll pick a base point over here like so. OK. The reason why I made this a block is because we're gonna need this to use it in the rest of our shadow studies. So if in the future you want to modify or change your property boundary, the changes will update in all of them at once. OK. So I'm gonna copy this block using the copy command. So I'll type CO and I'm gonna copy from this point to over here click and over here 
like so right now i'm gonna select all of these blocks and again i'm gonna copy them down using copy command like so finally i'm gonna copy one of these blocks and place it here on the 3d side view all right i'm gonna rotate this block using the rotate command and then type r for reference click here here and then finally over here i can scale this block now using the shortcut sc for scale and pressing enter i'll scale from this point click type r for reference and then click here here and over here i can explode this block now using the shortcut x and pressing enter and then i'm gonna scale this using the s shortcut and i'm gonna scale it to over here like so all right looking pretty good so now we go to paper space and here we are ready to create our pdf of our shadow study or analysis so i'll use the shortcut ctrl p to open plot here in autocad and since we already set up the page manager for this specific drawing we don't need to do anything here all we need to do is click preview to kind of see what we're gonna get and if everything is looking good let's click plot i'll save it over here and here is the final architectural shadow study great congratulations time to meet the winner for this week autocad consultation so i'll go to my last video which is this one over here the part two of shadows study all you had to do to participate was to answer the question from the video using the specific hashtag okay it looks like we have no participants this week that is actually okay but i'll encourage you to participate if you feel like you're taking too long to finish your autocad drawings and remember if you want to participate in the next giveaway for an autocad consultation simply answer this question using the following hashtag